All right, guys, we have a new streaming. Oh, wait. Okay, now it's going. We have a new stream setup. So I have a tripod dedicated for this webcam. And I changed some of the settings on the webcam and the mic. So it should be pretty sweet. Anyways, I am so burned out of making these freaking YouTube videos, you guys. I mean, I like solar power and I love electronics. And I've been doing it since I was like seven or eight years old. But man, I am I have so many other hobbies and interests right now. So I need to find some motivation to do these videos. <laughs> Cause right now I've been actually studying economics and history a lot. And um, working out, and I have all these other hobbies and mountain biking every single day. And everybody, I get bombarded with like 50 to 100 comments like, when are you going to make your next video? And like, I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that slams you with videos every single day. If there's not a practical utility for my video, I'm not going to make it. So I'm just like, <laughs> and I've done like all the videos. I've made like almost a video on every single topic of solar power. And I like solar power, but I don't love it that much, you know? I'm pretty like motivated and I love a lot of things, but I don't know. And I'm not gonna do a windmill. I do not like wind power. I mean, so many people ask about that. And there's moving parts. Um, the controller, the charge controller is more complex and can break over time. It's just, I don't wanna do it. Oh yeah, I got a haircut, you guys. How cool is that? Change from the gold standard. I actually wanna make another channel about economics. Um, I have a lot of opinions on political and economic topics. And the more I read about history, the more I have to say about the current landscape. I think that, you know, the more you read about history, the more you're like, oh, wait, I want it to be this way or that way. So anyways, I don't want to make solar videos forever. I'm going to make solar videos forever because I have to, because most of the other ones are not that good. And that's why I, I was like looking for solar videos when I was younger. And I was like, this is horrible. It's like some old dude just rambling on for an hour. And I'm like, it has to be fun, guys. It needs to be lively and has to be educational. So I felt like I had to do that. Let's see some of these comments real quick. Hey, will why not try more BMS or smart home stuff? The BMS videos, I mean, I don't know what to talk about there. It is such a simple apparatus. Um, I mean, yeah, usually it's just testing to make sure it works. I don't want to be a product reviewer. Like, you know, those YouTubers that just have a product and they're like, guess what, guys? It's the best thing in the world. We're going to test it out. And then they make sure that it looks all nice and good so they can make more money. And I just don't care. I mean, once this house is paid off, I'm not going to care about money at all. I'm going to get out of this currency as much as possible, pay my taxes. And I just want to like, <laughs> I want to build my own stuff. I don't want, I want to build my own machine shop. Honestly, I want to get a warehouse and some of my friends, all they do is fabrication. And if we get the right tools, we could build some really incredible things. I could do the electrical. My friends can fabricate the frames and chassis. And we could, what we want to do right now is build mini bikes. My friend Max, he just built this insane mini bike with like this old, I think it's a Honda mini bike frame. And he's, he has two lithium polymer batteries. Um, I actually made a video about it, one of my old solar generators. I think it's a thousand watt hours, but they can push 10 C. So he's, he can push like 20,000 watts with two packs and the nominal voltage. I forgot what, run, oh, he's about 60 volts. But man, I want to make that kind of stuff. That's super fun. And I also want to make a solar powered airplane with some sun power cells. There's some other YouTubers that have already done it. And I have a really nice airplane that I could stick those cells on. But um, I want to do more of those fun videos because like reviewing batteries, man, is really boring. <laughs> I mean, I can make it fun sometimes and I like it personally. So I can get really like happy about it. But, you know... Reviewing batteries is not that fun. If it's a new battery, like if someone does a drop in 12 volt lithium titanate, I have to make a video and I will be all over that and I will work 24 hours a day. But when I've done like 20 videos on lithium iron phosphate and you guys know every specific detail on every data sheet, if you watch my videos, it's, it's just so boring, man. I don't know. Do you have a significant other? I don't right now. Yes, Las Vegas is a ghost town right now. 
Yeah, you do you, man. You know what? If I really... Oh, gosh, these comments are crazy. Uh, by the way, my electric e-bike... Uh, I mean, I messed that up. My mountain e-bike is so much fun. I've been ripping on that thing, man. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to read some of these comments first. Ooh, that's not very fun, man. Um, testing failure modes on lithium ion packs under short circuit conditions. I tested a circuit breaker a couple months ago and it almost destroyed my tool. Um, it was one of my crimpers and it's a very high quality, nice crimper. And I thought it was gonna be just a quick little burst. It was like a 50 amp, but it was at 48 volts. So that's a lot of power. You have to think about the total amount of power that's going through that. So yeah, under a dead short, and there was probably a delay on that circuit breaker. It was a lot of power and it melted the tip of it off. So also when you run that much current and heat through steel, usually it's steel, um, it's gonna change, like I think the, uh, it can make, make tools brittle. My dad's a mechanic and he told me that before. He's like, if you mess with it too much, it'll change its properties and won't flex as much. So, or it'll make, yeah, make it more brittle. Experiment building a redox flow battery. Let's see what that is. Isn't all batteries some form of redox battery? Oh, it's reduction oxidation is a type of electrochemical cell. Hold on. Oh, one of those. Oh, that's actually really fun. I think some of the servers for Facebook, they use this type of type of battery. So yeah, you have a membrane and you have different solutes and because it wants to do osmosis, I guess, or ion exchange, and then there's a current and then you extract energy from that on the membrane, I guess. Yeah, look at that current collector, ion selective membrane. That's really cool. I think what you do is you have like a river flowing into an ocean, you have salt water, and then you have fresh water. And that difference will cause movement across a membrane. And then you extract energy from that, which is pretty darn amazing, in my opinion. That's really weird, honestly. And there's even membraneless flow batteries now. I've never heard of that. But I also think if I make something that's too weird or arcane, I guess, there's no point in everyone seeing that. Like there's a lot of YouTube videos where people make a very strange device and we're like, oh wow, that's so cool. But I don't like that because you guys aren't gonna build it. I mean, there's some cool like applied science. He has the coolest channel in the whole wide world and he makes the coolest stuff. But 99.9% .9 of his viewers are not going to use that. And like, it's, it's good for education and theory. And it's really hands-on. And I love those videos. But I feel like most people don't have access to an electron microscope, you know, or trying to make, um, or what, what was he doing? I think he was um, isolating helium on his own. I mean, he's got all sorts of crazy videos. He's like a, a magician. Okay, let's read some of these comments here where can we buy batteries apart from china we need more production elsewhere it's so funny because people are always like support america support america but we're we're really behind in a lot of ways and it's unfortunate like america back in like before world war ii or during world war ii i guess you could say People were like, they had a drive and they wanted to manufacture. But nowadays, everybody's trying to outsource everything. And I understand that people, you know, I, okay, not to get too far off the topic, but yes, we need made in America lithium iron phosphate. Tesla, how to live in a Tesla. Why would anybody live in a Tesla? That would be horrible. Oh my goodness. You know how much room? Like even my Model S did not have much room in the back. It's good for long stuff because it's a big car, but I would not want to live in that. You should live in like a Sienna or a van or an RV. How about doing a camper van solar panel setup with known YouTubers? Element van life. Man, I don't want to do that. I hate going on roofs. <laughs> 
I love the electrical aspect of it. I just hate like actually doing the installation. <laughs> I've done so many van install video stuff that I'm like, I don't know. I don't I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. It has to be like new. I feel like a lot of my new viewers haven't seen my old videos where we beat like the basics down to death. And I don't want to say the same thing over and over. I know some YouTubers will have a basics or introductions like every six months. And if I didn't, if I, if I messed up and I didn't cover fundamentals, then I'd have to re um, revise it every six months. But I never did that. So I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't feel a need to go over some of those topics like van setups and RV setups. Element Van Life is a really nice guy though. I've never met him though. I've met most of the other RV YouTubers. How many t-shirts do you own? Only a couple. I only wear, yeah, like four t-shirts. Every penny I make right now, you guys, is going to this house. I almost have it paid off. I made another payment and I'm at 70% paid off. I'm like not spending money on anything except for solar. I still have to buy like, so you guys know the little shed set up in the backyard. I've been buying a bunch of stuff for that. I need to seal the door with some weather strip, but it, you know what, by the way, I, actually, I don't want to spoil the video, but the air conditioner system that's powered by solar hasn't used much power at all. Like it's using like half as much power as I thought it would. It was 97 degrees all day. It was 85 degrees all night. And I kept it at 75 degrees for a very am small amount of electricity. Um, I'm going to insulate it more and do further energy audits, but I don't think I have to do much at all. A lot of people were saying that it won't work that well. And I don't, I don't think so. I, it's working great in my opinion. It's great. Do you do custom wiring diagrams? I don't do any custom or consult work. I'm going to focus more on education for the masses because when I focus on consult work, which I used to do for friends and family, They'll come back every couple of weeks and say, oh, how do I do this? What's over here? How do I change this? I want to upgrade that. And I can't keep up with it. When you have like five install jobs that you did, and then they come back every month or so, and you have a constant flow of emails. What I'm doing right now is I literally delete every single email that comes through this channel because people keep asking me these things that are on the channel. Like very basic stuff. We have it in the frequently asked questions on the forum. We have it in the forum in the beginner's corner. We have it on my website. We have it on beginner playlist videos. And I still get hundreds of, of emails. So I'm just deleting them. People will send me like 10 paragraph emails. And I just, I don't know what to do with them. I'm not going to go through all of that and like tell them exactly what they can find on their own in five seconds. So yeah, you should do a tour of a lithium mine, Philip says. That's freaking funny, man. Actually, that would be, those are, well, we just get them from dead seas, right? I mean, we just make like a, a solution of brine and then we, don't we like evaporate it and like refine it somehow? I forgot how they do it. It's pretty boring, honestly. Van life was so 2010. You know what? When I lived in a van for the first five years, I didn't tell anybody because I was pretty ashamed. Like the area that I lived in, um, people would treat you pretty badly. So I didn't tell anybody. But nowadays it's like cool and hip and you're like a hipster or whatever. Tesla makes their own batteries in the USA. Yeah, but those are NMC. They're not lithium iron phosphate. And I don't think there's a lithium titanate manufacturer here in the States. Southern realist. I would just build any system you can. Just build it. I don't, I mean, do an energy audit and compensate for the loads. Oh, wow. Barricade bought four Renogy Smart Lithium batteries. Very nice. So it's going to be a 12 volt nominal, right? Please do a video on lithium drop in battery tied to solar suitcase and truck alternator for camper trailer. I think we've done that. We have alternator charging. There's like three or four videos on that. And we have solar suitcase for lithium. I even covered lithium titanate. So, I mean, I don't I don't see the point, Edward. I mean, what, what specific points are there that you're not finding in my videos? A fully electric camper van. 
That would be pretty cool, actually. That would cost a lot of money, you guys. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I don't think I want to spend that much money. I'd rather get a gas one. I mean, I love solar and I love electric cars and I love batteries, but sometimes you just need to buy a generator. <laughs> like some people want to power these massive water pumps for only a few minutes at a time for different scenarios. Um, I forgot what they're using them for. It's on the forum, but I was like, just buy a generator. Just buy a freaking generator, guys. I mean, solar is great, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have like 500 pounds of batteries. You're gonna spend five to ten thousand dollars for an inverter. Like, you might as well just buy a big generator. In my opinion, I don't know. Yeah, we could. So a lot of so with grid tie, I don't know if I want to cover grid tie videos because people can kill themselves very easily. The micro inverters are probably the safest bet like an in-phase system without storage, just a cutoff and just a couple other safety features and conduit. That would be a good video. But recently, um, Jerry Rig Everything has made a video that covers nearly everything. And he did a great job. Um, I don't wanna like, like, you know, beat something to death when someone else has done a better job. Yeah, I'm not doing collaboration videos either, you guys. I feel like they're so pointless unless, like what can another channel, hmm. Tell me a good collaboration video idea because I don't see too many that are highly informative. Unless it's like something that's, you know, good for mankind, like the donation for planting a million trees. That was a cool collaboration, but I'm very scared of those. Oh, a review on Solark 12K. I actually will probably do the Soul Arc. The Soul Arc is kind of like my favorite right now on paper, but I haven't used it. Why bother with grid tie? Well, it's cheaper. Honestly, if you're trying to power an electric vehicle and you have um, the grid and you just want to throw some panels on your roof, it's pretty cheap. Big generators are not fuel efficient for winter charge. I'm not even talking about charging. Absolutely not high flying Patriot. I'm saying if you have a large water pump and you need to push a lot of power, you're better off buying a generator versus spending $20,000 on one of my lithium systems like that. In my opinion, I'm just not going to do that. Did I just hear honking? No, I haven't had any honking on my side unless you guys heard something weird. Japan is changing over to 48 volt DC nationwide. What do you mean by that, Walter? What is better, four 48 volt 18650 cell packs in parallel with a 12, 25 amp BMS or a single battery built? I think that you should have a single BMS. You could argue redundancy, but I like a BMS with a coulomb meter where I can actually track and see how all the cell groups are going over time. I personally like one BMS, but I could see an argument for multiple parallel strings with their own BMS, but that's up to you guys. I don't know. It depends on what kind of work you want to be doing with your, uh, um, what do you call it? Maintenance. Prius is better than Tesla because it has a generator. EV without a generator is a flawed concept. I disagree, Von Rupp. Um, Mainly because no matter how much you, well, <laughs> this can go into so many different arguments. Let me think. Uh, have you had an electric vehicle, Vaughn? Let me know. Let me know if you've had one because I don't see a single reason to have it, especially the range of the new Tesla I have. It is so efficient and there's charging stations everywhere. Efficiency difference of high versus low voltage solar panels. Well, the solar volt or the solar panel voltage is determined by how many cells you have in series. So the, the efficiency won't go up or down. Um, you could make an argument for converter efficiency from the input to the output for charging various nominal battery bank voltages. But there's not going to be a difference, David, on the efficiency. Unless, are you talking about converter efficiency? Because that's a long in very good discussion. That's that's super fun, actually. Like in PPT, when you have a very low amount of power coming in, um, 
the the efficiency of that converter is pretty low and then it goes up and then it kind of trails off usually you're going to be above 97 percent in a peak it's like 99.7 i think but that's not all the time you're usually going to get around like 98 percent it depends on which company is building your mppt though oh victron multi plus review that's a smart idea roam the unknown i agree with you Will you disconnect your house from the grid to run only on solar and battery if you can? Yeah, I can do that. No problem, Duff. I could easily do that. Guess what, guys? I decommissioned three batteries in the last week, and it took so much time. I had different value resistor packs, and first I started at 12 volts, and I discharged it down to like 8 volts. Um, first with the inverter down to 10.5, and then down to 8 volts with my resistor pack and with a heater pad and some other 12 volt appliances. And then I had to discharge all of those down to practically zero, but then the voltage recovered. I would wait 24 hours and it was at like uh, 0.5 millivolts and then it would go up to 1.2 volts. And then I tried to put a resistor pack on there that was too low of resistance in water and it arced. And I was like, oh, are you serious, man? Are you, come on. So I had to be very careful about that because I had a lot of arcs that's what I was dealing with this week is just discharging those battery packs because I have too many batteries now. I'm Those ones were already damaged and they were a return for Ruxu. And I was like, all right, I'll take them. And then I was like thinking we could shoot them with a gun or we could catch them on fire or do something fun. But YouTube will demonetize me if I do any like really fun videos. So I'm not going to do that. It's so unfortunate because I really wanted to do that, but now it, they're just taking up space and time. So I'm just I'm just removing all of them. Do a co collab with Jihu Garcia. I don't know what um he like does his own stuff. Oh, thank you, Angela. Jihu's cool though. Okay, can you guys tell me a single reason to test a Dakota battery? I have had like thousands of comments and I cannot understand why anybody's interested in this thing. It's like a cheap relabeled Chinese case from like the first generation Renogy batteries and people want me to review it. There's it's oh it's pretty expensive. There's I don't think there's any safety ratings or features at all. I mean besides just BMS obviously, but no safety certs or UL listing. Okay, let's let's look it up. Let's give it a chance. Maybe I'm being stupid right now. Okay, I don't see a single UL listing or safety cert. It's a cheap rebranded case that you can buy for $15. I mean, what is compelling about this? Can somebody prove me wrong here? I don't see a single reason to buy this thing. 100 amps, max continuous, 10 second pulse, 200 amps. Like, are people actually buying this thing for $900? <laughs> Can you guys prove me wrong here? I would love to be proven wrong. I, I don't see it. To capture the revenue of people looking for a review on it. I guess I could. I only like, I like to review things that I think will be good. But when I am not motivated and I just see that, I'm like, that's just, that's lame in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap at all. It's very overpriced, especially for that. For, yeah, unless you guys are getting some kind of deal. Hydraulic press channel collaboration, super V stitch. That's perfect. We could smash a bunch of lithium batteries. Oh, these are funny. Victron MultiPlus or MPP Solar? Well, the Victron MultiPlus does not have a, a charge controller, it has a charger. But the MPP Solar has a huge charge controller. I was actually talking to one of my viewers on email and he's trying to decide between like all in one system and he's going to have a 13,000 watt array versus um, modular system. So like midnight solar charge controller in a Victron MultiPlus and the price difference, if you count in everything 
It's just crazy, man, because the all-in-one at that price point for that array size, you're going to have 480 amp, 48 volt solar charge controllers. If you were to buy those midnights, I mean, you're going to have to buy how many? Actually, maybe like three of them. So you could only have parallel three parallel strings, which would be nice. But yeah, the, the price was like two or three times as much because the Victron, the one we were looking at, it was a five kilowatt. So you'd have to put two of them in parallel. So you're going to look at how much was that? That was 2,400, I believe. So that's like, that's a lot of money. And that MPP is only 2,000. So instead of spending like nearly like seven grand, you only spend in $2,000, but they are UL listed. And they even have the UL listing for those midnight and outback controllers for using it um, with grid tie battery backup systems. So if you have a battery backup with a grid tie system, um, whether it's a DC bus or AC bus or however you're trying to run it, you can actually use that solar charge controller from midnight to charge up that battery bank and have a separate array. So if you have like a ground mount array and a grid tie stationary array on your roof, you could make them all work together or better yet, you could have like an RV in your driveway and you could just run some Timco um, copper 10 gauge and have a, a series string for your UL listed solar charge controller with its own cutoff and such. And that would be legal. You could actually work that with the grid and feed the grid with that power. And it could still be on like an R. Well, that technically that part of it wouldn't be to code, but the charge controller would be to code and you should be able to like throw some panels out and do that. But that would be so cool, actually. How do parallel batteries of different amp hours? Tim, you just need to do it. Um, there's They have different internal resistance and the large one has a lower internal resistance and will feed more of it. The hardest part about having different amp hour um, batteries in parallel is making sure that current sharing isn't a problem. So if you have a really big battery, make sure that it's supplying its proportion of the pack and that it's wired appropriately. Uh, yeah, current sharing is the hardest part there. But yeah, you, you can do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Are lithium car starter batteries worth the money? I don't think so. I love lithium batteries, but I'm not seeing the reason over like an AGM or a, a flooded cell. They're pretty darn good and they are super cheap and they last a good amount of time if the charging system of your car is working well. The number one 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. What's your price range? Because I have a lot, Corey. There's a lot of batteries out there. I've been looking at Discover battery and I want to pair that with a Soul Arc inverter system for a, a true off grid, but grid tie system. That would be perfect. Um, but they're very, very, very expensive. And if I mention them on the channel, people would probably get a little angry. They're a lot more money than a Battleborn but they have every listing in the world and <laughs> they even have CAN bus communication system. So if you are using like a soul arc inverter, it works together. I mean, how cool is that? But yeah, these are very fancy, high quality batteries. What's some other good batteries? Uh, Simplify, I wouldn't buy those because they do have the charge cycle life guarantee that's really high, but they're not doing anything special with their chemistry. Um, I think those ones have a larger capacity and then they change the charge um, discharge band cycle bandwidth. So that's how they're achieving those numbers. How about a video on, but it doesn't have CAN bus communication. And at that price point, I would think that it would, which is so strange. People are waiting for you on the other live stream. I don't have another live stream. That's weird. How about a video on how to find out state UL laws and what not to do to get into legal trouble going DIY solar system? If you're touching the grid, you should get an electrician. Um, because if you are trained with the safety protocols, you would know the code. So I think, I mean, you could do DIY solar and have an inspector before you turn it on. And if you're doing in phase, it's pretty darn easy. But if you're doing like a truly off grid and you're trying to make everything work with the code, I don't know. There's so many ways you can go with that though. 
there are such simple systems and then there's battery backup with modular components and that's very difficult and i don't think people should try to do that on their own yeah that's tough yeah we could go over laws that's something i should talk about more of i feel like that's all i've been researching nowadays is ul listings in the code so that's because i mean all the other basics is just basic um science hold on i'm gonna hide some users because we're getting some spam why do walmart 90 dollar marine batteries suck they're not meant to be overly discharged and also they're not true marine batteries either those ones still have spongy plates so you know how on starter batteries they have spongy lead acid plates so that or a lead plate so that there's more surface area for that chemical reaction to occur well those degrade pretty quickly if you discharge them below like 95 percent they're great for starting um, internal combustion engines but for solar, you don't want to use it. Oh, there's another live stream. All right, I'm going to turn that off real quick, you guys. Give me a second real quick. Why would there be another live stream? That's so strange. Okay, I cannot find this the area. They changed the YouTube studio. Oh, come on, man. They made it all modern and minimalist, and now I can't find anything. It's so ridiculous. Oh, come on. Really? Jeez. Oh, I don't see what you guys are talking about. Can you post a link? I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Philip. I'll go over there real quick. Yeah, it doesn't show anything at all. Oh, it probably showed a link. Oh, three videos in your subscription feed. I hate when YouTube does that. Why can't they refresh it fast enough? Oh, people were waiting on the other stream. I know YouTube keeps doing it, man. And I'm not the only YouTuber complaining. It makes it very difficult for me to actually, yeah, I don't see the other, oh, okay. So you guys just got notifications for the live streams, that's why. When are you buying a decent hydraulic crimper? Bradley, can you tell me of your favorite one? That would be really cool because there are UL listed crimpers and they cost at least $270. And I love my crimpers. So if you have a cheaper one that's still at, um, AWG American wire gauge that would be lovely by the way I know some people are going to be a little bit upset because I deleted everybody off of my Instagram so like you know how you have followers and you have people that you follow well I deleted both sides so that people can't see my stuff because every time I posted like a meme or something funny people were like that's not solar power related and I'm like uh I have a life dude I don't do solar power all the time like I love solar power but not that much so I'd post like mountain biking and stuff and people were like can we see more batteries and I was like really this is my personal Instagram so now I'm just deleting everybody I'm deleting all my emails I'm deleting all my Instagram I'm just deleting everything so I'm gonna keep my personal life over here and then I'll have my my uh, solar power over here. I might make another channel though, and I'll do podcast type style videos with good friends of mine because I have a lot of interesting friends that are very educated and I think you guys would love them. They do not have any social media. They do not post anything anywhere, but they're very successful, smart people. And I think if we could all talk together, that would be cool. Um, that'd be great. Oh man. Where's your cat, Will? I have him in the other room because he was a little needy today. <laughs> yeah, I need two accounts. Be like HGTV and show us your house, do some renovations. Man, I would make an entire channel about all of the modifications I've done to this house. We have three solar tube, um, uh, what do you call it? skylights right letting the natural light in and today i insulated the garage door because i have an electric vehicle with a chemistry that can degrade pretty quickly when it's 100 degrees so 
yeah, I've done so many things to this house. My backyard is looking so good. And I work on it all the time. Art Fango, you, you've been looking forward to the LV5048 video, but what do you want to know? I started filming that video and I felt like it was so pointless and boring. Like it is such a simple battery. You just have positive and negative. I mean, not battery, I'm inverter. You just connect the main battery terminals. And then you have a four, you have two legs for each output for a split phase, or you can do a single phase and then you have neutral and ground and that's it. Like, I, I don't know what people want to see on that unit. If you can use even the 12 volt, 800 watt one, it's the same interface. So let me know. Let me know what you want to see. Using a soft start to run an AC or emitter saw. Honestly, just get a bigger inverter. If you're doing high frequency inverters, just get it really big. I think a lot of people... Oh, is the LV5048 the same as the 5048 MK by Jack? I think it is because I just uploaded the manual for it to the resource section on the forum. And I'm pretty sure it's just showing it as the same exact one. Actually, I need to show you guys that. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's great. It's free for everybody. And you get to post solar power resources. So check this out. So user manuals for inverters data sheets for batteries, everything you could imagine. And we're posting it there for free. Yeah, best not to give a tour of your house by John. You're right. I, you know, It's so funny. I have like nothing valuable in this house too, but I totally agree with you on that, John. It's unfortunate. E-bike batteries. The, it's so hard because you can buy them for so cheap and they work so well. Like with my e-bike, I just bought it because the battery fits inside the frame. So it's waterproof. It's easy to use. I charge it like once a month and I still bike all the time. So I don't know. I don't think I would want to make an e-bike battery. I know there's channels dedicated towards that, but I wouldn't want to really do that. For solar, home built batteries are great though because they're so easy. Your opinion on rely on batteries. So they're an OEM supplier for installers and for some boat applications and cold um, temperature applications and stuff, but um, they're overpriced. So for like a hundred amp hour lithium iron phosphate with no special features, it's like $1,200. And I just, I don't see a reason to use that. They do have their new series lineup with CAN bus communication, which is pretty cool. Can you do 10 push-ups? Yeah, I can do 10 pull-ups too. I love to see you overclock a Victron 1030. They they can only handle a certain amount, but they have overcurrent protection, so it would be a pretty boring video, honestly. I tried killing one, though, and it wouldn't die. They're pretty darn robust. will start cutting open and reporting on motorcycle lithium iron phosphate batteries. The motorcycle world needs some good reviews. Honestly, Eric, we need some lithium titanate batteries. I don't know why they're messing with lithium iron phosphate for motorcycle. I mean, if you have a little heater pad and those are like 10 to 15 amp hour, but I would prefer having lithium titanate. I think that's the big thing that I'm excited for is lithium titan titanate drop-in replacements. There are so many companies that are going to be doing that soon. It's not even funny. Um, people love them. I mean, the discharge rate, you can use it in negative 20 degrees Celsius. It's incredible. It's not as efficient, obviously, so not as good for solar, but it will be a battery if they make it well that will last like 20 or 30 years. But that's if calendar aging at your temperature is not, you know, you have to account for all factors when you're doing longevity claims like that, like I just did, but you could theoretically make them last for a long time. Vaughn says EVs with generators isn't about you or me. It is about homeless people in California. I was homeless in California for years. Apartments for homeless is a waste of money. If they lived in a Prius, they could work, live, and move. I don't know if we would really want that. Do you want a bunch of people living in Priuses? I would much rather have a structured place where, where people live is close to where they work so that they're not driving two hours for a commute. Um, go, after going to Hong Kong and seeing that people will literally live and work in some of the same buildings or 
they will just go a level down. They'll take the subway to another um, skyscraper and then l work over there. And so they don't even have to touch the ground. So just the efficiency of moving people around would be nice. I'm just not a big fan of cars in general. I know it's very American to have cars, but I wouldn't want a bunch of homeless people in cars. Um, and why are they homeless? Um, <laughs> we could talk all day about why price uh, house prices are overinflated right now. But yeah, I wouldn't be a fan of that. Summer in Southwest, high temps, lithiums, and RV, still safe to charge using Victron MPPT. It's absolutely still safe, Barner, but you're going to have increased degradation. What temperatures are you talking? Yeah, there are quite a few curves. We have a video on that that I posted a while ago about degradation at different temperatures. That's the only thing... <sighs> It will still work. You're just going to have a reduced capacity after a couple of years. Do you know how to play an instrument and would like to collaborate? I I don't play any instruments. I actually beatbox. I'm not going to show you guys. I do it in my spare time. But I think I'm pretty good. And my friends are like, what the heck? But I love doing it. The 11th octave. Also, scientists use sound frequencies to make a microscope star in a jar. I don't know what that means. I'll just save that in a new tab just to look it up. Star in a jar provides limitless energy. This has some pseudoscience <laughs> trigger words. Living in Phoenix is just like Las Vegas. You guys, just a quick little update. My solar shed with the air conditioner, I thought it was gonna use a lot of electricity but it's not, it's only a few kilowatt hours. I'm gonna have the vi the numbers and the video upcoming. And if the temperature difference is too great and it's just hot, it's, if it's like 110 degrees here at night, it's gonna be very difficult to cool down that shed. But so far with like 97 degree days, I can keep that shed at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 hours a day. So that's even with 85 degrees at night. So it's, it's doing pretty good. Yeah, guys, I'm not responding to emails. I, I am getting so many emails. I know when I first started this channel, I could help individuals and I didn't, I didn't charge. I just wanted to help you guys out. But now it's getting to the point where I will get hundreds of emails and I can't read them. They're like 10 paragraphs long and it's like, some guy in some random state and, he, and he'll tell me the details of his entire system and then list out like 20 questions. And I'm like, I can't answer these. If I were to answer my emails, I wouldn't have enough time to make these videos. So I have to allocate my time um, accordingly. I just, I can't, there's not enough time in the day to do that. Yeah, my friends do visit me in Las Vegas. It's cheap to fly out here. So we've been having some of my friends and family visit. What will home energy look like 100 years from now by David? I think passive heating and cooling will be a lot bigger than what it is now. Right now, we're just building buildings <laughs> with this modern design. They look like prisons. And, you know, the building codes are good, but I think that over time, as we start thinking more and more about it, I think passive heating and cooling with the season is incredible. And also geothermal cooling and heating and stuff like that. I guess you would say cooling most of the time. But yeah, in the Russian tundra, I know that if you go a certain feet below, it's like 70 degrees. So I think passive geo cooling and heating will be like more common. Um, right now it's just too difficult, you know, to do that with every house. We have a large population, but if we can plan a city to use energy really efficiently and to move people around and to make food efficiently, that would be amazing. But yeah, I, oh man, I think we're going to have solar for a long time. I don't know if it's going to be solar like what we have today. Because we have these new efficiency records, we're hitting like almost 50% efficiency, but it has th uh, six junctions in that cell. And that's that probably costs a lot of money to make. That's like the gallium cells. Like you're not gonna find those on the roof of a house because they cost so much more money. And is it even worth it? Like think about a cheap um, 
solar cell that you can buy nowadays, like a sun power is like what, 20 to 22%. And those last for a very long time. You might as well just have two of those panels instead of spending 10 times as much for those super cool laboratory cells that we're making. So like, I never get really excited about those. I can't show it on here, Trevor. I, <laughs> I always like beatbox to myself when I work right now. I can't do it. I'm too shy. I can't do it, you guys. Earthship fan. Yeah, I am. But at the same time, I understand like the growing population needs and how we need some possibly like underground buildings where people live. I think underground would be great because you'll have protection from radiation from gamma rays or cosmic rays. And if you have an asteroid hitting the earth, if you have a food production system underground or better yet under the ocean, because the ocean that could protect you from all sorts of radiation and heat. And if we don't have much sunshine, we still have thermonuclear decay at the core of the earth. So you could have some really cool geothermal energy providing systems for making food underground. That would be really nice. I think this pandemic has shown us that how dependent we are on various systems that like life right now is very fragile. And I think we need to focus on making it strong. I mean, look at our economy right now. It's based off of debt. The moment that money's not circulating through our little economy, everything defaults. Like everything's based off of debt, it seems like, with my ignorant assumptions of economics. I understand the basics really well, but that's what I've kind of deduced over the years. And I just, I don't like that. We're very pathetic. We're very weak as humans. And I think we need to focus on how to make a very sustainable future. Um, right now, if something, there's so many things that can kill us so quickly. Um, I think underground cities are going to be the next big thing. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, I think it's a lot easier to make a metropolitan city underground than to make a civilization on Mars underground or a civilization in Venus. I think a civilization here on Earth, um, I, I understand the pitfalls and downsides and I understand the water table and I understand saltwater corrosion, um, especially when currents flowing through it and the problems with that. But we need to find a way, and I think it would be a lot easier to make those civilizations here on Earth versus going to Mars. And I think, like, think about how hard it is to go to Antarctica. I mean, it's so cold that jet fuel freezes, right? Think about how hard it's going to be to be on Mars. Um, so I think we need to make our society more robust in that manner, just with energy extraction, food production, also isolating people without having to move things around. Imagine if we had an underground city where food was automatically created and distributed underground um, to each person's abode or where they live. That would be really nice. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of Mars exploration. I mean, I love the idea of exploring, but I don't think there's much there for us. Just the fact that its atmosphere is so thin. I mean, it's 3% of what we have here. I'm, that doesn't make me very excited. <laughs> I just don't see the point of that. Also, think about the solar power, the irradiance. Okay, the star, the sun, is it's, going, it's pushing photons out in every direction. When you double your distance away from the sun, which it's not double, but it's like quadruple less photons that you have density-wise. So in my opinion, I don't want that. That doesn't sound like fun. I'm actually more of a fan of going to Venus and making like a cloud city that has less density then that heavy, thick air underneath it, and then just keeping it up, and we could put it at the perfect temperature. That would be really nice. The problem with Venus, though, is like Mars is great, so we could use it as like a station to go to other planets, or we can use the moon. But the Venus is not so much like once you get there, going back to Earth would be pretty darn difficult. Um, what is that? I used to play Kerbal Space Program for years, you guys. I love that stuff. But yeah, getting that much cargo to Venus would be pretty difficult, honestly. Oh, man. Also, energy storage in the future. I wonder if grid management type batteries are actually going to be lithium. We are using it for grid like stabilization such as in Australia where they were having blackouts because it would, I think it would trigger a circuit breaker or something. And then it would make part of the grid go out and then they would put it back online. 
but the um, the Tesla battery has been evening those out because the lithium battery is great for that. It's like a buffer system, but yeah. Joe Bernard, is that the guy that makes the, he's trying to do, let's see. Yeah, BPS Space. I've been following for a, for a long time. I get, I give him um, Patreon support. I like that guy. He seems like a good person. Oh, health and wellness videos. That would be pretty fun. I could start posting on my old physical therapy channels. I used to post a lot on their Silicon graphite batteries. I always forget about these. Hold on. Lithium silicon batteries. Oh, geez. I would have to read this for a couple hours. Hold on. Oh, okay. So... It's a silicon-based anode, and right now we're using graphite, obviously. So the specific capacity is larger by a lot. Look at that. So you get 372 milliamp hours per gram for the graphite anode, and for the silicon anode, you get 3,600 milliamp hours per gram, which is incredible. Oh my goodness. The problem is, is that it expands and contracts, and so it destroys itself. Oh, so the graphite would prevent that, I guess. How do they do that? Yeah, silicon graphite composite electrodes. They've been in development since 2002. 2016, Stanford University researchers presented a method of encapsulating silicon microparticles in a graphene shell, which confines fractured particles. Oh, so you just let it fracture, and then it holds it there anyways, and acts as a stable solid electrolyte interface layer. Um, these, micropar these microparticles reach an energy density of 3,300 milliamp hours per gram. Tesla founder Elon Musk claimed that silicon in Model S batteries in cars range by 6%. That must be one of their, you know what, did you guys see the new NMC, or I think it's NCA, um, by Tesla that does 4,000 charge cycles. They have a patent for that, which is really impressive. Okay, let me go back to the live stream and see what people are saying. <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> battery comes here, deep notes and knowledge. Stick two wires into a capacitor and two wires into your outlet, charge up the capacitor a bit, and then throw it at a wall and watch it explode. You do not do that all the time, living the Hawaii life. You know what I used to see people do is they would take the big subwoofers and they would be 60 hertz. And so with that AC, you could actually plug it into a wall and it would go, woo, 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 and then it would burn up or explode. Or, it, you know, it would, black smoke would come out the lacquer on the coils. But I, I thought that that was pretty funny. That was a long time ago. How do you add batteries to my grid tie system so that it is fooled into running when I disconnect from grid? I wouldn't do that because the inverter that you connect to it needs to be larger. So if you have a grid tie that's like 10K supposedly it can work but it needs to be larger and it depends on how it modulates that power i think it's by the phase and i'm kind of ignorant on that so i'm not going to tell you guys anything yet but it's very difficult to do and people that are a lot smarter than me on the forum have told me that you don't want to do that typically what you could do is have an ac coupled inverter that's off grid so or better yet a transfer switch to your own off-grid system. So when the grid tie system goes down because the grid's down, you switch over to your off-grid inverter. That's probably the cheapest, easiest way to do it. The <laughs> Those cables are very expensive though. If you wanna push 50 to like 100 amps with 240 volts, it's a 
big old wire, man, especially if it's like 100 foot. What is the current best deal for cells for an RV? Well, because RV is a vibration environment, you want to use like fortune cells. You can buy Eve cells for very cheap. It's like $450, I think, for 280 amp hour cells for 12 volts. So we're talking like one fourth the price of like the cheapest drop in replacement. But you're going to have to add your own BMS and build it yourself. Um, and, and do it right, make it nice. What is the square footage of the shed? I think it's 150 or 160 square foot feet. And that air conditioner is working so well, you guys. It's incredible. Uh, what are you talking about, Adam Smith? What economic? Oh, I lost your comment. Darn it. Honestly, the lockdown hasn't been bad because I work from home anyways. And by work from home is just I build stuff and read books and just hang out and eat food. So nothing's really changed in my life at all. Self-healing polymers and electrodes. I have not seen that Atlas. Which type of battery? That's pretty neat. Because we use polymers and, you know, lithium, lipoly, lithium polymer batteries. But... Is that in the electrolyte or is it on the electrode? I think lithium polymer means that it's on the electrolyte. Last I remember, let's see. Yeah, it's a polymer electrolyte. So what are the, what, yeah, what kind of batteries are they using that for, Atlas? That would be interesting to learn about. I do not like the Nissan Leaf batteries. Absolutely not. They're overpriced for their performance and for their expected life cycle. And typically they are at 60% of the rated capacity. So I'm not a fan. Video on step up and step down converters to save on wiring. I actually, oh, I see what you're saying for long runs at DC. I would do AC anyway still. I don't like high voltage DC. It scares me. A DIY solution for heating lithium batteries in a van build. The more I research that problem, the more I just don't think that we need <laughs> battery heaters. What you should do instead is just insulate it and discharge the battery at different intervals. And the discharging will heat up the battery from the internal cell, like the deepest part of the cell. And that's what they used to do on the old EVs with lithium iron phosphate. They would turn their headlights on, they would discharge the pack for like a minute or two, and then the battery would warm up and then they would start it or they would charge it. But um, yeah, I mean, I like low temp cutoff, but I, I'm not a super big fan of the battery heaters. I actually have a battery heater system and I don't think it kicked on at all, all winter. I'll put, I'll find, I'll check, I'll, I'll try to find some data on that though. But I don't think it's used as much as people think. If you're in Russia or something and it's actually cold, then sure. But for most people, just insulate it. More tests and teradels on cheaper Chinese batteries. That does sound like fun, actually. Oh, diversion and dump loads for solar by Johnny. Those are pretty fun. We we do need to do that, actually, because a lot of solar charge controllers have their terminal load um, um, output, I guess, that you can run in relay like a Victron. So you could use that to turn on a heating element and just heat up water. That would be easy to implement, too. It's just a relay and a, a big old resistor. So that's that's cheap and fun. Oh gosh, we got a lot of comments. Hold on, guys. Yeah, we could cover the split phase 5K MPP, but what do you want to know? It's it's literally the same as the 12-volt one. I mean, same interface. The output is so easy. In three-phase 220-volt or, you know, 208 or whatever it is, 209, you, it's so, it's so easy. 
I don't know. I mean, what what do you want me to cover? We could talk about wiring it, I guess. People don't like my wire jobs, though. Most of my systems are temporary, so I just want to, like, make a video and move on. But most people are like, I want this to last 100 years. And I'm like, guys, I'm taking this apart in, like, five minutes. <laughs> Oh, it's cold everywhere outside of Las Vegas. You are right, Northwest Hiker. But I still think that you could have those things in zero degrees. And you know what? We actually have some data. There's this one YouTuber. He posted some of his... He works in a lab. And he was showing the sea rates where you have damage. And you could see at different temperatures where you actually have the damage. And the sea rate for solar, if you have a large battery bank and you don't have that much solar and it's trickle charging it, like my battery bank, I don't need low temp cutoff because the C rate when charging is already so low. It's like a 700 watt array with a 14 kilowatt hour battery. So th the C rate is a joke, right? So I could have it in like zero degrees and I should be able to charge it just fine. I'd have to compare it with the data that he has so though and make sure that I'm actually right. But yeah. Are Battleborn the best and safest option right now for the next 15 years? I don't think so. People are going to make lots of different batteries over the years. And Battleborn's going to make new batteries too. The, the batteries that you see right now might be the old ones next year. So I don't know. They have a lot of stuff in the works. All of these companies do. Battery heaters are more desirable in marine use. Oh, so like high C rate. Um, externally regulated alternators with high output, like 200 or 400 amps or something. And then you're trying to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery quickly. I could see that. That makes more sense. Yeah, that would require it. Yeah. Or like if you're trying to use it as a starting battery, you absolutely need some kind of heater system. Why did RV Bob get mad at you? I forgot the reason. Oh, so back in the olden days when I used to do how to live on the streets and I was like living in the RV and the vans and stuff, I made a video showing the income of all these YouTubers. And I started off saying how much I make and how much it says I make on the thing or whatever on Social Blade. Yeah, Social Blade. And I posted all these YouTubers and their incomes and people got butthurt, but it's publicly available information. And I posted mine because who cares? I mean, you can tell, you know, by how many views they get every month in the ads and how much they're monetized. But yeah, he got mad about that. That was pretty much it. And then he told me, hey, Will, we're going to do a live stream together. It would be great. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And we're going to talk about lithium batteries. And then he found out that I live in a house and he said, oh, we only want nomadic people on the live stream. And I was like, I lived on the streets for nine and a half years. Why do I have to be not nomadic to help people with batteries? Like I can still help people. And he wouldn't take it. He didn't want to do it anymore. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then he came back and he wanted me to do the RTR to help teach people solar. And I was like, what? I thought you told me that you didn't want me to teach your people or whatever. I was like, what? So I don't talk to him at all anymore. He's He's up and down just all over the place. So yeah, I avoid a lot of the YouTubers now. I met a lot of YouTubers and they were not what they seem like in person. Like when you see a video, they smile, you know, they smile. They're like, hey guys, it, today we're going to build this. And it's, but when you actually meet them in person, a lot of them are business guys and they're like out for the money. Like they really want that money. And it's just the competition is hilarious. I feel pretty immune to it because my videos are just solar and I only like specific chemistries. So there's not much competition and the people that do do solar, I mean, literally put me to sleep. So I think I'm fine and good to go, but I avoid most of the YouTube channels, man. <laughs> I do not like them. Also, I don't want to be influenced by other YouTube channels. Um, it's very easy as a YouTuber to watch other videos and start changing your editing or how you introduce things. And what I like about my videos is I'm not prepared and I wanna just get as much information across as possible. So I just turn on the camera and I'm like, all right guys, this is what you need to know. Let's learn this as fast as possible. 
And I think that's why people like it. It's funny though. I get comments on these videos and people will say, you need to slow down. You're talking way too fast. And I got like four of those today. Whoops, four. <laughs> I put three. Um, I get like, I got four of those today. You need to slow down. And then some people even today said, I need to speed up. And one guy said, you need to speed up to 1.25 to actually listen to me. And I was like, what? And it was on the same video. Like people actually disagree with each other in the comments all the time. So it's really hard for me to like actually cater to the needs of my audience when everybody's telling me opposite things all the time. It's so funny, man. And also the reason I like YouTube is to find an individual channel. Like I like the difference. I like variety. Like when everyone has the same clickbait titles and they're like, Hey guys, NordVPN, we're sponsored today by um, Squarespace. I don't want to do that. Like, I think it's so cheesy and I will not let my viewers be bored to death with lame advertisements because I don't like them because I use YouTube, you know, and I don't want to see that. So I'm fixing that problem directly. I don't want to bore you guys to death. I'm hoping other YouTubers can do that as well, but I don't know. Maybe they're really desperate for money. I don't think they are. I would love to see some of their financials because I can't, I can't tell sometimes. For me, I think if I pay off my house and I have solar power charging the car, um, I'll be pretty much good to go and I won't have to need money. So I think my videos might get a little crazy because I'll be like, whatever, who cares? I'm not doing this for any money now. Like I don't need it. <laughs> And so I'll just like make some crazy videos, like lifestyle videos or my opinion, or we'll make some really cool stuff like electrical projects that I wouldn't do previously, or even some dangerous projects. That'd be kind of fun. I did some really cool dangerous stuff with batteries this week, um, but I don't want to talk about it on the channel because I know the beginners, if they try to do what I'm doing, it's dangerous. But you know, arcs are crazy, man. That's all I'll say about that. But I had to discharge batteries as fast as possible. I'm, I've been doing, um, I've been decommissioning some of my lithium batteries I'm not using. And it takes a long time to do it properly. The voltage will recover after you discharge a lithium iron phosphate. I would drop it to like 0.5 millivolts and then it would rise back to 1.2 volts the next day, like 24 hours later. So I've been finding all sorts of interesting ways to discharge those safely. But um, yeah, cat videos, Tinder swiping, right? That would be so much fun, right, you guys? And I just, yeah, the lame ads, there's so many. I don't do any clipping of my voice in my videos. I just, I experiment a lot with different mics and I found some that are good for my voice. Some people have lower or higher pitch voice and they should use different mics. Oh, thank you, Vincent. That's awesome. Yeah, everyone puts the nails into the lithium polymer batteries. Those are fun. I honestly want to shoot a bunch of stuff. I've been shooting guns all the time out here, and I love it. I even have trainer guns, and I've been, like, testing, like, around my house, like, getting all the angles for clearing rooms. And I've it's a, it's a hole, you guys. If you get addicted to guns, like, there are millions and millions of videos on that, and you can learn all so many different techniques and skills. So I would love to make some videos blowing up some lithium batteries, but YouTube would demonetize me. So I don't want to do that, but I would love to make some crazy videos. I mean, what I do in my spare time and what I actually study and what I want to do is like totally different than, you know, I have to, I have to filter myself a lot on this platform. Testing e-bicycles, man, it's, it's so boring to test them. I mean, they're really good now. Like what's there to really say, just spend more money, honestly, just buy the more expensive ones. A solar powered rail gun. Rail guns, I love them in theory, but isn't it that they vaporize the material at the end of the barrel and it just literally vaporizes it and you know just shards of metal just spitting out every couple shots so i don't i don't do that i can't yeah there's it's difficult to make a rail gun what did you do with your hair i cut my hair one of my friends okay tesla scoop is constantly saying test 12 volt solar panel to 12 volt battery no, you don't want to do that at all, man. It's not going to be worth it at all. Um, That converter circuit, the 200 amp converter in the front next to the front, it's only one way. And 
yeah, I highly doubt that they have a current limited back feed to a 400 volt battery. There's no way. That would be silly. Move into your Tesla. Why would I move into my Tesla? You guys, I have a new, oh yeah, I need to get a concealed carry. Parker Fawbush and, okay. I've been following a lot more channels on close quarter combat technique and how to get Honestly, if you just shoot every day, that's how, how I get good. It's just constantly shooting some kind of gun every single day is really good practice. A lot of people will read stuff and be gear junkies, but actually practicing is where you get good. Same with mountain biking. You know, you have to go out there all the time. Solar panels are bad for the environment, jo John Harlan. The amount that carbon footprint wise for a solar panel make up for it over the course of its life. That is such an old myth, you guys. People need to stop perpetuating that one. It's so silly. Liquid nitrogen, quantum locking. What is that? What is that? I don't understand what that is. Yeah, the declassified UFO videos. I don't know what to think about them. I don't have an opinion. I mean, it looks interesting, but I don't know. Yeah, sure, Alice, if you have one. So I go out to the desert out here, you guys. I just go out to the desert. I was going to the, the range, and then I have to spend like $25. And one of them, the, the owner is a viewer, and he's a really nice guy. He's really cool. But um, yeah, I just go out to the desert. I have my own like setup and stuff. But yeah. I can't tell you what I carry on here. I don't want to talk about too many details unless this will get demonetized, you guys. It's just a very fun hobby. It's important for most people to know how to do that, too. I do have the 19, Dean. I love that. I love that gun so much, man. Multiplex demodulator? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that word is. I can't see the laser during the day usually, especially with what I'm doing like that fast. It's not. We can make a solar powered. No, I don't want it to. I can't say anything crazy on this on this feed, you guys. Can you see the cats? I want to show you my kitty cat, but he's he's napping right now. He's so cute. He's the funniest little thing. Saltwater batteries. I haven't I haven't used the Glock 20 actually. All right, guys, I don't want to use too many of those words, though, because this might get demonetized. I love, love it, though. Yeah, I deleted everybody off Instagram. You guys, if you have Instagram or Facebook, delete your followers and have only your family and your close friends. Having personal family, I mean, God dang it, having random strangers on your personal Instagram is unhealthy in my opinion. I wanna make videos about that, like how bad social media is, especially for kids my age. They just sit on their phone and they are so unproductive. They're out of shape. They don't read any books. And I, I, want, I want a YouTube channel that talks about priorities in life, what people should be doing and why they should be strong and smart. I think that would be great. Cause yeah, yeah, he's napping. He naps all the time, he's so funny. Starlink satellites fly over Vegas? I have not seen that. No. Yeah, I'm going to make another channel for that stuff. That would be pretty cool. It's funny that YouTube and these social media platforms will block things that are not that dangerous, and then they'll block other things that offend people, which is so funny, man. I don't want to do a Simply Fi Teardown. Somebody else did, and it was super boring inside. And then the Victron, it's just balancers, and it's externally regulated and modulated with high and low voltage disconnect. So I, I don't know. There's no reason for me to... Oh, wait, no, that's the... Yeah, that's the Victron. Oh, um, yeah, those ones don't seem very that, that cool to me. I should probably do it anyways. Yeah, social media is smart for business and networking. You are right. I shouldn't judge it that much. I just think that it, there's a point when it's useful and there's a point when it's not. And I think a lot of people do not use it in a good manner. And even me, I get pretty distracted by it and I don't like that.
Oh, thanks, Crossside Cricket Farms. They're on my Instagram. They're cool. Simplify is cheaper than Battleborn? What? That is wrong. Okay, let me look at their current prices unless I'm ignorant. Hold on. 100 amp hour. Yeah, look at this. 1.4 kilowatt hours for $1,200. Where in the world are you finding that? Please let me know. Please... Please post that. Which distributor? Is it possible to convert a car to run on hydrogen? I don't know why anybody would want to. I would never do that. Talk about Tim and Eric. Oh, man. If I made a personal channel, I would make it crazy. People wouldn't. They'd be like, what the heck? <laughs> I couldn't have that association with this channel because this channel, I have to act all smart and educated, but like, I would love that crazy humor. <laughs> That'd be so fun. Oh, thank you. Camper go one camper goer one. Any budget builds? I'm not from the UK. My last name is from the UK. Actually it's from Cornwall, England, but I'm not, that well i am english but that's not really my last name it's my step grandpa's last name 3.8 kilowatt 48 volt ced green tech all right let's look that up cole i'm not seeing it anywhere oh here we go I don't see any specific model of batteries. I've been price checked. No, I haven't. I can't find it. I'm waiting for someone to prove me wrong. If somebody can find a Simply Five for cheaper than a Battleborn, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, I need to pretend to be smart. <laughs> it's Freedom Van. What's up, buddy? You guys, he's one of my close friends, by the way. I haven't met him, though. I've known him for years on here. We like a lot of the same stuff. This boy is European. <laughs> you know, it's so funny, you guys. My dad thought he was Native American because he was. I was born in Oklahoma. He was raised in L.A. and Oklahoma, and my grandma's still out there. And for some reason, his family told him he was Native American. And he got his blood test and he's all white, man. He's all white. He's British, German, and a couple other things, but he's white. But my mom's actually Mexican, which is, she's really Mexican. So you can, like my, my grandma and everybody on that side there, which is so weird. But I need to get her tested too, because what people say and what they actually are. I don't want to do the Dakota lithium iron phosphate, Joshua. It, there is not a single compelling reason. It's an old rebranded case that's similar to the Renogy first generation. I, I can't find a single reason why we should do that. It's overpriced. There's no safety certifications. There's no UL listing. Please tell me a reason why anyone is talking about Dakota. I think that the reason people talk about it is because they have such an effective marketing um, campaign or strategy. Like they post it on Instagram and everyone's like, oh, I should try out this battery. But man, I am I I don't see a single reason why. I live in Oklahoma. My friends think they are Native American. No way, geezer life. Isn't that funny? My dad told everyone his whole life, oh my gosh, that he was a Ma Native American. And he wasn't. He wasn't at all. Oh, just oh man, that was hilarious. He was even gonna get the land or whatever and sign up for it to get land. In the reservation. Yeah, but I think my family from Mexico is Span Spanish because they're pretty light, but they're from Mexico. Like half of my mom's family is Mexico, Mexican, like straight up. Like when we go to a family, well, my mom went to one, a family reunion, like they are dark. So, I mean, half of them are dark. And then my mom's side, they got, you know what? I think I don't know the entire truth of my family because they say one thing and people, you know, cheat on each other. So, and then after my dad's blood test results, I don't trust anybody anymore. I think I should just get a blood test myself because I don't think, I don't think anyone knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Cause they'll say that they are and they have these, 
I don't know. I don't trust any of them. But I have an uncle that's like, really, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. Anyways, Baghdad battery, that's incredible. A hundred years old or hundreds and hundreds of years old. Oh, I learned about plantar fasciitis because I had it. Yeah, hospitals swap babies around. Also, there wasn't much genetic diversity when it came to small groups of nomadic tribes and also just small cities in general. And so if you cheated on someone, your baby would probably look like that other person because everyone looked the same in your region. So yeah, I think it. <laughs> I think the only way you can tell is if you have a blood test. I'm not trusting anybody with what they say. Because there are so many people out there that could easily lie about that. So I don't know. I don't trust anybody on that. How often do you do this? I don't know. Whenever I feel like it, I guess. Yeah, the DNA test doesn't really qualify you the benefits for the tribe, but you have to maintain a relationship. Oh, interesting. And also those tests can be inaccurate. Because they have different markers for different... Um, family strains or whatever. What is it? Like some of them, they just test the mitochondrial. Is it RNA or DNA? I think it's RNA. Let's see what it is. But yeah. Um, oh, it has its own DNA. It's not RNA. That's cool. I guess RNA is only for virus and is it bacteria? I can't remember. Bacteria have DNA and RNA. The DNA in bacteria, just like eukaryotes, is stored in form of a chromosomal structure along with associated proteins and RNA, but is a circular double strand. Oh, so it expresses the genes and then it uses RNA, probably with rib ribosomes. I want to know more about bacteria. I used to have a microbio book and it was so freaking interesting. Yeah, RNA is used throughout the body and uh, yeah, in eukaryotes and large organisms as well. Mitochondrial DNA traces maternal lineages. Okay. Okay, let's go back on topic. So I need to make new videos this week, you guys. I'm going to make a solar powered AC video. And I'm going to talk about the energy audit and what I've been doing. And even on 97 degree days, it's doing great. So I can't wait to talk about that. But oh, Miller Tech battery lithium iron phosphate. Let's look up that one real quick. Oh, wow. Look at this. I've never seen the Miller tech. Let's see what the 100 amp hour costs. Oh gosh, guys. No, this doesn't look good at all. First of all, it's pretty pricey. Second of all, it's using that state of charge indicator, the voltage one. This is a cheap relabeled case. And usually, guys, I don't know. This looks really cheap. There's no safety certs. I don't see a UL listing. Let's see the price per amp hour for the 200 amp hour. So 1650. So yeah, $825. Without any safety certs, why is anybody buying this thing? A big red flag is when you see the voltage monitor readout on the top of it. That's not what you want to see with lithium iron phosphate because that charge and discharge curve is so flat. So yeah, that doesn't seem like a good time, guys. I just bought eight Battleborn batteries and would love some ideas about how you think I should set them up. Looking at Victron Orion versus Sterling. What, what do you mean? Like um, wiring them, I guess? Or... For 24 versus 48, that's a that's a big question. I, I don't know. Thank you for the ten dollars. I'm just trying to think about and what what aspects of Sterling. I I like their converter systems for DC to DC charging. Like they have a step up one. Water Blade LLC 200 amp hour lithium battery. Let's look up that one real quick. And my internet's slow. Beautiful. Oh, it's on Amazon. God, this thing looks cheap. 
Oh man, and it's overpriced. It's over a thousand dollars. Does it have safety cert? Does it have anything? I mean, I'd like to see something with at least cell level UL conformal or um, conformity or whatever to those standards. So we have an IP55. That's it. That's it, you guys. I wouldn't buy this. I don't see a single reason why. Yeah, I'm not, not a big fan of that one. Hit me with another one if you guys have more batteries. Discover Batteries, guys. Check it out. I think they're an OEM provider, but they're really nice. He does not understand the depth of the American. He sees the American as a fashion item. What does that mean? These comments are so strange sometimes. Thoughts on new Goal Zero regulated 12 volt models? It's, it's way overpriced. And honestly, there's another company. I can't say their name because they told me not to tell you guys, but I'll make a video on it. It should be okay, but... Honestly, there's so many options now, and they're mostly pretty good. We don't have the same issues that we used to have. Bio Eno batteries. Let's look that one up. Uh. Okay, post the battery and tell me why you like it because I can't find any compelling reasons for these batteries. Like if you post something, tell me why you think I should look at it because I just checked out this Bio Eno and I don't see any special features or anything. Installing an inverter in a Model S? Why, why would I do that? Can I raid your garbage can for my batteries? Allergy lipo cells on battery hookup. I'm so tired of the used batteries. I mean, I like some of them, but most of them I wouldn't waste my time. Yeah, you can't. I Ivan, yeah, Ivan, Ivan. It's fried. Once it's fried, did you reverse polarity it? American made lithium ion batteries. The only manufacturers of lithium batteries is Tesla and let's see. Lithium iron phosphate, there's none. We've got FMC Corp, Albemarle Corp. I know that one's a pretty big one because I used to read about their investing. Oh, they're a chemicals company. Wow, I can't find a single place about what they actually make on their website. Here we go, lithium. Okay, this is such a horrible website. <laughs> I'm not going to try that again. Uh, yeah, there's not many. There's not many American made. America is really behind when it comes to manufacturing lithium batteries. Yeah, buying eight Battleborns, that's a lot of money, man. Yikes. Grape Solar, good brand or not? I've not tested them. They still have positive. I think they're the ones that made positive ground controllers, and I was I don't understand the reason for that. Calb Weston, Cattle. There's Eve also. There's Fortune. Honestly, most of them are pretty good, you guys. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, I just go with the cheapest ones or I get fortune because I like the fortune, but I don't know. There's lots of options. Most of them are pretty good. I would get aluminum cased cells. More and more, I'm liking them. They don't expand and contract nearly as much as the old manufactured method um, prismatic cells. I've noticed, have you guys seen like Wit on Winston and on Sino Poly? They expand and contract quite a lot. I don't know why. I know there's like a, that's why the specific energy is higher on the aluminum cased cells is the manufacturing methods involved. And they use like a micro, 
<laughs> I can't remember the word that they have, but they're, that's how they make it smaller. But maybe that's why it's not expanding and contracting. It's similar to the microfraction with the silicon graphite batteries. Maybe they're doing something like that. Um, I have to read about it. Okay, see you later. Good night. I got 32 Fortune 100 amp hour cells by Brad. You are smart, Brad. I like them. Those are the only batteries that I keep inside in air conditioning because I care about them a lot. They're good. What is your preferred game and system platform? Right now I'm playing Apex Legends a lot, which I might do streaming because I can talk a bunch of crap on that game and I love that game. And I'm really good. I can use... Um, like pistols, what's the heavy ammo pistol on there? Gosh, the, oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking right now. Anyways, I love that game. I can do 2000 damage in a game. So I could do like a streaming. It wouldn't make any money though. It'd just be fun. Yeah, like a Twitch channel, exactly. It'd just be like, just stupid fun. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I want people to see that side of me though on Twitch, like me playing video games. I mean, I go crazy. I get so freaking competitive. That wouldn't be good. You should do a battery factory tour. For which factory? I could go to China when we all open up again. That would actually be pretty cool. You know what's funny? is like... <laughs> no, I shouldn't mention that. I don't play PUBG. I need to play it, though. Seems like all the good guys started from there. Yeah, that is a lot of money, dude. That's a lot. Let's go through these other comments. Hold on. Oh, by the way, some new news, guys. I'm planning on looking for a second house in northern Idaho, but I'm not sure yet. I'm going to drive up there and look around near Spookan and uh, Corral de Alla. I forgot how to say it. Hold on. Cordialine, I can never, I can never say this word. It's gorgeous up there, and I could build a, a, doomsday bunker, slash farm slash house. Oh, thank you so much, John. That would be so much fun. I would love to do that. Spookan, Spookan. Okay, thank you. Cordy Lane, Cordy Lane, Cordy Lane. Thank you. Corday Lane. It's freaking gorgeous up there, you guys. And I like Idaho. I've been to Boise and I thought it was great. So I think it would be great to buy another house up there. But I don't have as much solar power. So I'd have this as my desert home that powers my electric cars. And then during summer, I could go up to Idaho and like live up there for a little bit. So that would be great. Oh my goodness. And you can literally make like a farm or something out there. It's so much water. It's so nice. It'd be so cool. You'd have to clear some trees in some of those spots though. It's so pretty though. It's very cold. So I would not live in Idaho during the winter. I would live in, in Vegas during the winter. And then I would go up there from May to September, I think it was. And I would be good. I'm not a big fan of Colorado based off of what people tell me. Everyone I know there doesn't really convince me of it. Like, and it's really expensive now. Yeah, Western Washington. I think Eastern Washington, like high desert in Eastern Oregon is crazy cool. But I still want to be near an airport. So I've been to places out there that are really far from everything. Yeah, I couldn't do the freezing cold, you guys. Silly on Silly Lion claims solved expansion of anodes to Tesla now involved in 350 watt hour per kilogram. Wasn't the magic number for lithium ion batteries 400 watt hours per kilogram and then I think Elon Musk said that every single airplane in the sky would be electric. He said that like, I don't know, seven years ago or something. But if we're hitting that with a charge cycle life of 4,000 for these new cells, we should be able to build electric airplanes. 
No way, Dean. Really? How do you like it up there in Idaho? That'd be so cool. Yeah. I don't know if I could go to Missouri, though. Just get a Winnebago and become a snowbird. I would honestly just take my little Model 3 speed charge and just go up to Idaho. Like, there's chargers all along the way. And it's a pretty drive, so I think it'd be fun. Really, Colorado's liberal now. That's not fun. And I'm not, I do not like Republicans in this country either. I disagree with every political party, even libertarian. I like libertarian ideals, but I cannot stand the political party and their complete lack of understanding of why you need a political system in general. I don't know. I, I do not like any politicians nowadays. None of them can even talk. Like, they're really, really hard to listen to. An Solar powered nuclear fusion reactor? What would that be? What do you mean? A solar a solar array is a nuclear fusion power harnesser from you know, I mean you have fusion fusion in the sun, so that's what it's doing. Yeah, have your own principles. I can't stand it. There's nobody I want to vote for at all right now. At all. Like every single person is a joke. Every single politician I can critique to know in, like, if you learn um, political science in college like I did with fundamentals and then you apply it to this mess, it is crazy. I cannot side with any of these guys. And they're very inconsistent. They are always, like, doing things on a whim or based off of emotions. Like, ah, I can't do it. Yeah, a solar array is a very inefficient nuclear reactor. I don't think I had any politics. I didn't have any opinions there. I said that I don't have a position. Is that having a position now? I feel like I was pretty vague on that one. I didn't put post. I had things I want to say, but I didn't say anything. I just said that I do not like any of these politicians. Have you guys seen them talking on camera? They can't even talk, man. They're, ugh. Yeah, Musk tweeted that 20 miles per day. Dang, I wonder what kind of solar cell he's using for that estimate, for that range. It's probably like a gallium solar cell or something. I can't tell you, but I do not consider Texas an option. Isn't the property tax rate really high? I mean, okay, guys, go on YouTube and look up political debates in the 40s and 50s. Look at how eloquent and well-presented those people are. Like, even if I don't agree with them, at least they have coherent thoughts. And, like, you can act, like, structured logical, sta logical statements against each other. Nowadays, it's just blabbering. People are just screaming at each other. They're very uneducated and not qualified. And I just don't understand how these people get elected. Okay, how to use electric car rechargers to recharge lithium house batteries. I actually made a video about using the converter of a Tesla for charging like a goal zero and stuff like that. Being non-political will get you a lot of anger from the left. They think that you're shrugging your shoulders at fascism. <laughs> So many opinions that I have on that. Oh, my goodness. I was actually reading all day about how, um, well, you know, Marxism and Lenin and then how Stalin came to power and how many times he was, like, exiled. And it was amazing how, and I, I <laughs> obviously I'm American and I don't like fascism at all, but it's amazing to see how these powers came to be. These guys had not a whole lot of stuff. And how they made deals with local businesses for protection and they made little gangs. Like that was an incredible revolution. Um, I, I, would, I think more people need to read more history, man, because there's some really cool stuff out there. Or just how like meritocracy came to be about in certain civilizations, which I like, you know, basing, um, um, how would you say? Uh Give it the weight of the value of your word based off of qualifications and not like 
who you are, where you came from, or your emotional whatever. Ugh. I know, man. I know. <laughs> I agree with some of his comments. Oh, goodness. I might actually do something like that. I could start with local politics. Seriously, I won't even need any money after this house is paid off. Like, solar power will power everything. So I could make some crazy videos, you know? I can make videos on whatever I want. I mean, I really need to keep it nice and good right now so that I can pay all pay this house off. But after that, man, I want to make some crazy videos. <laughs> That'd be fun. And it would be pragmatic. And sometimes I wouldn't have a position on things. It would be really, really good stuff, I think. It'd be helpful just asking questions, really. Just asking very strategic questions. I just want to plant certain ideas in the minds of people. I think <laughs> Bill Burr and uh, was it George Carlin? Was it George Carlin? He was the comedian. Yeah, Carlin. There we go. I love his stuff. He's probably taught more about things in the world than anybody else has. Oh, wow. This Sarihari Nakara. He wants me to answer a question I he asked. How to get a job in solar installation? Oh, that's easy. You don't even need to be an electrician nowadays. You can get a certificate for an area for being an installer. And you don't have to know a whole lot, honestly. It's pretty easy. I don't like I don't like wind turbines, honestly. Yeah, I miss Carlin too. It's so funny if you speak up about certain political topics, people get angry and it's like I think people should engage in that discussion. I don't know who Rex Bear is, no. Looking for recommendations on electric motors for boat propulsion, specifically for regeneration on a sailboat? Wow, okay. That's an interesting application. You could do that. You could have like a three-phase induction motor and then have a Hall effect sensor so that you have like regenerative braking on a sailboat motor. And so when it pulls you, you charge up your battery. That's not that hard to do. The hard part is finding a very high quality speed controller and a high quality motor that's well designed for that use with really nice bearings and everything's really top notch. But that shouldn't be hard to build, honestly. Homestead Rescue, where you hook up off-gridders with solar help. That's an interesting idea. Like some sort of place where everybody can gather and or I mean, not gather, I'm sorry. Um, I, I was thinking about it from like a corporate level as a nonprofit entity, like getting installers in touch with people that need help for off-grid. Because when you want a grid tie system, you can go anywhere, you know? You can buy that stuff. I mean, you can go to Costco, you can go call up any local installer and they all do grid tie. But to do dedicated low voltage DC off-grid, there's not as many installers for that. So that would be a cool like thing for homesteaders to have, I think. Honestly, I <laughs> Ben Shapiro. I love how Ben Shapiro argues with people and how <laughs> he talks. I don't agree with what he says half the time, but he's a, he's absolutely incredible with talking to people and I love it. Honestly, I think we need a new constitution for the future with technology and the environment. I think that we need new laws. I'm so tired of people saying, it's my right. It's my constitutional right. And I'm like, okay, yeah, why don't we make a new one that's updated with the environment? Um, I feel like there's no such thing as like conservative free market environmentalists where you make it competitive for... Um, different. Well, that's the thing is resource extraction with conservatives. They don't want the government to infringe on their rights so they can take as much from the environment as possible. But if you have a carbon tax, I think that's where regulation actually helps for helping the environment. That would be really nice. Um, of course, I'm ignorant on this topic. I'm just some guy on YouTube. But I think that if you could instill like a free market 
<laughs> free market. There's no such thing as a free market anymore. People keep saying that. And I'm like, that doesn't exist. All right. All right. That's, that's so silly nowadays with our current like global economy and central banks. It's just, it's not here. Um, everything is taxed by <laughs> in like regulated. Anyways. Yeah. We need an update to all of this stuff. We need more, um, everything. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to talk all that long. They will tax you for breathing if there's a carbon tax. No, you guys, I hate government, but I still think that we need to take care of the environment. All right. <laughs> Gosh, that's why I like solar pa panel power. Right. It's funny because solar has like super like hippie types that want to live off grid and not talk to anybody ever. And then they have people that just want to save money. And then there's people like there's, there's different like walks of life. There's people that are like um, doomsday preppers and they want energy inter independence. And so those, those do not fit well together. Like those people have very different political opinions. So for me personally, I just want to save money. I mean, that's why I love solar and I love electric. Like it can power everything. It's like magic, right? You can power your AC with photons hitting like the velocity. That's incredible. So personally, I just think it's the most efficient way to do it. And I don't like to spend money. But then other people, it's more of like a uh, energy independence is because they hate the government and they hate the grid and they don't want to be a part of the government and they don't want any regulation. So, you know, there's people from all different political, whatever ideologies. Oh, meritocracy based on environment and resources, not profits. That is really smart, man. That would be cool. Ooh, a hydro home system. If I had a river, man, that would be absolutely amazing. That would be cool. I want to build a small hydro generator. That would be awesome. Oh, God. <laughs> put on aluminum foil hat man the doomsday people they love conspiracy theories have you guys seen that <laughs> i love it you know what's funny is when certain people use certain psychotropic drugs they seem to have a predisposition for uh of uh liking conspiracy theories i don't know what it is but it seems like when certain people do certain drugs they love conspiracy theories but oh thank you so much roman it just cracks me up i don't know there's stereotypes with that decentralized grid is less vulnerable steve has a very good point honestly that is so true whether it's other countries or even if it's cosmic rays if you have like a soul r converter and you're you're you can have one protected from emf so or i mean like an emp so that would be really cool for a like a doomsday like off grid system because yeah you just have some crazy solar flare and then boom you don't have any electricity that would be horrible aeroponic system and what do you mean angela like a uh are you talking about fish feeding the water plants and all that no i don't watch too much joe rogan i think some of the people are cool but uh, not all of them. Oh, yeah. Guillendale 5,000 watt to run three 500 watts AC. I would do it. You should start them at different times, but I think it would work. I would put them in different areas so that they cycle at different times or at different temperature thresholds. So one will be like 74, this one's at 76, and the next one's at like a higher or whatever, so that they cycle at different times. Or you can change the insulation so that they cycle at different times or something. What do you think about flat earthers? <laughs> I think they're so silly that I don't even have an opinion. It's just so, I think that IQ is on a bell curve distribution wise. So there are going to be people with not enough mental capability or capacity to even understand that the world is round. So I think that I have to accept people for being low IQ and that they're born that way. But yeah, I just, 
it, it, it hurts my brain trying to figure out why people think some of these things nowadays. It hurts my brain. I, I don't understand it. Do you really watch my videos at 1.5? I had four comments today I mentioned earlier on the stream, and they said that I talk too fast. And then the other half of the people say I talk too slow. So I don't know, man. I mean, if you guys watch Tiger King, like when you watch that, that show, do you feel your brain just starting to melt? Like that is a lot of people are like that, you know? I mean, I have family in Oklahoma and I'm pretty sure if you get far enough away from towns, people just don't need to know much. They work at Walmart and it's no judgment, but you know, that's the people that are voting and driving vehicles. It's very scary. You know, it's, it's hard to ex accept such a thing. I think I pace myself when I talk. Really, Craig also does it at 1.5 as well. Yeah, distributed or smart grid would solve a lot of problems. You are right, Thomas. I agree. No, you will not fry an MPPT if the battery disconnects. It's fine. That was actually a... We talked about this on the forum and they gave evidence... There was some old manuals and they say don't disconnect or connect the battery first and then the solar array second. Um, it might track faster, but you won't hurt it if you have it only connected to the solar panels. They're made to handle that. Yeah, good point on pseudoscientists with making books to milk new niches. Dude, you replumbed your shower drain to the outside drum for gray water for watering it in the lawn. Dude, that's so smart. I want to do that so bad. No, I have not opened up the Kilo Vault, but you can find pictures online of it. It's an it's an impressive build quality for current sharing. Like it's a high quality battery, but they're not making it. You know, they're I I don't know what their quality control is like either. Yeah, you could literally leave those solar charge controllers connected for months and it won't hurt it. I have not done an ammo can build. Is it true that an array made of 15 panels are efficient on MPPT in low light conditions because as soon as each panel can give one volt, you start charging a 12 volt battery bank? So yeah, that's called the amp boost. And so when you have that high of a voltage, when you have a series string, you can charge very quickly, but it's not gonna be that much power. And so some people even argue against me with when I talk about the benefits of MPPT because a properly matched pulse width modulation will give you nearly full output when the sun's at full. And over the course of the day, you can produce a lot with PWM if it's matched properly. I think the biggest benefit for MPPT is just being able to put your panels in series. But that amp boost in the morning when you have low light conditions, it will create a lot more power than a PWM, but it's not that much anyways. So I'm not a big fan of morning light anyways. I like to consider the only light I have available is when the sun's like above 45 degrees on the horizon. That's when you start creating out a lot of power. Everything below that, is there's just so much atmosphere that those photons have to go through. So you're gonna have reduced output on your solar panels. So I'm just not a big fan about that. I like st some of Steven Crowder, but I do not like a lot of the political channels on YouTube. They side so much with certain things that their audience caters to and I do not like that. And they don't talk about why. Yeah, I don't want to get too far into that one. Oh, I insulated my garage door 
Oh, you're in Henderson. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, you need to insulate it, man. So what I got was a kit from, you know, Lowe's and Henderson. Um, they had those kits, but they sold out. So I got the kit from Home Depot near the Costco and Henderson. And that kit works really well. And there's like four more in stock. So you should try to grab one if you can. But um, I would get those ones first. And then you could put like a Reflectix for radiant heat on the outside. So you have the conductive. And so I like to use foam for that. And then you have the radiant, and then you want to use that Reflectix on the outside. And I got I got the Reflectix on Amazon for cheap. So I have two layers, and it keeps the garage relatively cool. It slows down the heating in the morning, but it doesn't really reduce the temperature by that much. You need to cool it off somehow. So I'm actually trying to think of some form of heat pump that I could put in my... I could even do like a split. I don't know yet. My my garage is right next to my AC panel, so I could wire up something. I could have like a little split or something because I want to keep my batteries nice and happy for the Tesla Model 3. For fun, you could read and reply mean comments. I could, but I don't know. I want it to be energy. I mean, uh, informationally dense on these. Because if you watch this, you know, stream later on after I'm done filming it, it has to be like kind of keep going. And I don't want to talk a bunch of, you know, crap to random people because they put hater comments. Oh, uh, you're not going to have a three phase inverter for what commercial application? What do you mean, Carrie? I don't. I mean, yeah, sure, you are right, but what what are you? Are you saying that you can't have it on the internet? They they're gonna censor everybody. I'm not a fan of Dakota lithium batteries because there's no reason that I can find that anyone has proven me to like it for. There's not a single compelling reason or special feature, and it's overpriced, and there's no safety certs, and there's no UL listing. There's no cell level UL listing from what I can tell on their site. So no, I'm not a fan of Dakota Lithium. Yeah, I've seen those heat pump water heaters that you can put in your garage. I might actually do that. Oh geez, how long have I done this for? Almost two hours, my goodness. I do not like 18650 batteries unless they're in pre-built packs. Oklahoma versus California. <laughs> Monster X, 2000 watt AC output, 1200 watt hour battery, solar input. All right, let's look it up. That sounds pretty cool. See, when there's a cool product, I'm going to be all over it. But when it's like, when it's the same as everything else, oh, dude, this looks so cheap. Look at that. I, that, uh, that doesn't look that great. That is the cheapest case on the planet. I actually had some of the prototypes sent out to me from quite a few companies and it looks just like this one and I would not spend my money on it. It does have good stats. I just, I would get an EcoFlow Delta before this. It is a good price though. I don't know. I like, I don't, I don't like it. It doesn't look that good. <laughs> A large zinc bromide battery. That's that would be pretty fun. Oh geez, these are some intense questions. I do have a battery hookup discount code. I forgot what it is though. Carrie, you're gonna have to check out my beginner videos. I have a lot of stuff on that. Oh, you got the Model 3 update? No way. You could join the other here on YouTube and make videos goofing on it. Would you guys actually want to see Tesla videos? I feel like there's so many videos on YouTube about Teslas. And I love mine, but I don't know if I... I don't know if you guys care. <laughs> I did some videos on how to use the converter of a Tesla Model S, and it got, like, what, 10,000 views? So... I don't know. It doesn't seem like people are more interested in a simple solar powered air conditioner. And that was easy. 
that took me like an hour to build. Like, I can't believe that got so many views. I thought it was going to get like 5,000 views. It has like 120,000 already. I don't know. I can never predict what people want to see. Like all the videos that I want people to like, no one watches. And then the videos that I don't care about, I'm like, hey guys, guess what? We got this, we got that. Woo -woo. And then I just turn it off and then it gets 100,000 views. It's crazy. I was like the million video, like the, the, uh, what were those? I made a video battery review and it got over a million views. And I was like, why? These were out of stock in like two weeks after I made this video. And then the price has been hyperinflated ever since. You can build your own battery for cheaper, but people still watch that video. I mean, it's a fun video, but it's not that useful anymore. So I don't know. I think people should just go to my website if they want to see what I recommend because that's what I update. These videos, you know, times change. Um, I have my beginner playlist that's useful for beginners, but I don't know. I do not have solar shingles on your on my roof. I have Q cells. I think they're like 325 watt, and I have a 4.5 kilowatt array. And I'm producing 30 kilowatt hours a day, you guys. And so in like three days, I can charge my Tesla and get 300 miles of range with that, which is great. Really? Julian's Random Project. Do you have your own channel? All right, I'm going to look it up because you've been commenting a lot. Oh, this is great, man. Good job. Look at this. Hey, good job. This is awesome stuff. Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be making a solar pack, or maybe it goes up on a walkie. Uh, Very nice, that. Julian. Yeah, check out his channel, everybody. Julian... Let's see, what is it called? Julian's Random Project. He's got some fun stuff. You're pretty good with building with wood too. That was a really nice box that you built. I would not use a wrecked Tesla battery pack, no. I made update videos, but people haven't seen them. <sighs> it's hard because I like something and then I make an update video and people will only see the first video and they won't see the updated video, and then they buy it, and then they get mad. And I'm like, <sighs> I don't know. Tom and I has their own channel. Let's just check that out. It's all CGI? Really? Oh, I'm getting Tom and Jerry. Tom and I YouTube. I can't find your channel, I'm sorry. That's a bummer. I think, honestly, guys, solar-powered air conditioning is very easy. Everybody on the internet complains about it. It's not that hard. The hardest part is insulating it and making sure that, yeah, the air conditioner is sealed. It's, it's not that difficult. Oh, I took it off of my website like eight months ago, Justin, the Tesla packs. I don't have those on there. I don't even have the lithium polymer packs on there. I love those batteries, but they're just too dangerous for everyday folks. I don't want them messing it up. You mess up one number on the charge profile and that whole thing's in fire. So I don't want to do that. If you had to pick only one battery to build a battery bank, it would be fortune cells. Those are my current favorite. They're the strongest. They're the highest quality. Um, what else is there? Yeah, probably fortune cells. Maybe Catel, um, C A T L. If you would not, oh, the four hundred amp hour. Okay, if it's not in stock on my website, you guys, it's because right now we're in the middle of a pandemic, so a lot of things are out of stock. My favorite solar charge controller was out of stock for a long time, so I mean, I would just give it a second. Oh, thank you so much, Scott. You ever make a self-perpetuating motor? My uncle loved perpetual machines and free energy. He was one of those guys that was like, oh, Tesla, yeah, he's free energy. You just make the tower, you get all this free energy. And I'm so tired of that stuff, man. It just drives me nuts. Is there a US distributor for fortune cells? Yeah, one of my buddies, I posted his link on my website. 
he's the guy that's selling the BMS because, okay, so I, you know, trusted all these companies and they were like, oh, we're going to have the BMS. We'll have it in stock. I was like, cool, great. That sounds great. Please make sure that you buy enough. They were out of stock in a week and then they were back ordered for like eight weeks. So this guy comes in and he's like, all right, I'm tired of this. So he posted his own BMS and he all, he's also active on the forum and he seems like a really nice guy too, but he's posting fortune sells now too. He's probably making a killing, but guess what? He's actually doing his job. So I like that. I, I get so tired of people when they say they're going to do something and then they're out of stock or they don't have, they don't capacity test. That's not very nice. Oh, thank you so much, Julian. Keep the videos come. I'll hit you up with via PayPal to suggest a collab. Where where are you at? What state are you in? Are you nearby? That would make things a lot easier. Because I'm out here in Nevada in Henderson. I would not use Peltier. I used to love Peltier devices at first in theory, but they're very inefficient. And yeah, oh, you're in Bay Area. What part of Bay Area? I used to live in Palo Alto. When I was on the streets, I was in Palo Alto. I loved it there, you guys. That was a great place. I don't I do not like the Bay Area either, but Palo Alto, like the parks and, and the hills, it's really pretty there. Yeah, don't use Peltier device for AC or heating. Don't do it. Get a heat pump. Could you review the Solar Genie 6000 and 9000? Wow, that's a big one. Oh, Morgan Hill. So you're outside of all the uh, craziness. Oh, wow. Look at that, guys. 6,000 watt portable solar generator for $3,500. That's actually a very good price. That's a good price because, what, you get 3,000 watts for this with the, uh, what is it called? With the Titan, but this thing has a 6,000 watt. Let's see if it's continuous. Wow, what a bizarre little apparatus from Solar Genie. Huh. These are interesting. I'll have to email them or something. They have some cool stuff here. It's it looks very homemade though. But if it if it works, it's cool. But you know what? At that price point, and if they're buying that stuff on their own, I bet you could make it yourself. I don't know what kind of battery is in it. Oh, there's no battery because it's only 70 pounds, right? Let's see how much this thing is. Oh, yeah, these are pretty expensive with these extra batteries. Yeah, it's about $7,000 with the battery and stuff. That's cool, though. I'm so glad someone's making it. Oh, look at this. They have a spelling error on their website, guys. Check this out. The internal battery is a 1,400 amp hour and a 50 amp hour 24 volt. So they should have put watt hour and then 50 amp hour 24 volt. See, when you see mistakes on a company website, I just don't understand. Look at this, you guys, check this out. Look at that error. Like, why would someone have an error like that on a product description? I, what? Come on. That just looks so bad. <laughs> oh, they have headway cells. I wonder if they're new. A lot of headways on the market right now are grade B cells, just so you guys know. Like Jihu did a test and they were super low in capacity. I think Battery Hookup was selling those ones. They're four milliohms for internal resistance, which is kind of high. Most of the ones I've been using are one. I'm not a big fan of headways though, because you have to make big old bus bars, unless you're gonna just use a single series string. Oh, they have a little kit for building them. That's pretty cute. Look how adorable that is. Wow, that makes it so easy to use those. And usually they're pretty expensive headways. Like, I don't know, I'm not a big fan. I like how it's a big cylindrical though. So you have internal cell safety features, which is pretty nice. Oh my God, I'm getting tired. Oh, they're still in Dally BMS. Oh, would you look at that? They're actually selling it with their name on it. That's cute. I wonder if it has a temperature sensor. 
I don't see the temperature sensor. They're using common port. They have a 300 amp lithium iron phosphate BMS for $255. You guys check this out. This is crazy. That's a big beefy BMS. Yeah, I don't like the big bus bars either. Honestly, can you guys find a better sell than the Fortune? That's what I like right now. Probably, but they're all out of stock right now. But I like those ones. Like the bus bars, the configuration for how to put them side by side, it's the best. A grid tie system, even if you're a noob. There's actually a project going on where you can have one without an inspector. You don't have to do it to code. And it will offset your bill a little bit, but I don't know. I see some problems with it. I think it, I forgot how it regulates the power output, but I'll have to show you guys. I, I forgot the name of it. Guys, I'm too tired. I can't even think right now. I, I need to go eat and sleep. I'm too tired. I'm so glad you guys got to come on today. It was super fun. I love reading your comments and I always go on tangents, but, um, I would go with Blue Eddy over Jackery any day just because of the type of cells that they're using. Yeah, Blue Eddy any day over the Jackery. The Jackery is just cute, and but yeah. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. I'm so glad you guys got to stay up so late. But yeah, w wow, 445 people watching in two hours. That's incredible. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. So much for watching and in stream now. See you later. Bye.